we have robot chicken people here. Brecken Meyer, Tom Root, Tom Shepard. Gentlemen, thank you for hanging out. Hello. Hey, thanks for having, having us. Having us. Your Welcome. main event is coming up in just a couple minutes. Your big panel. Mm-hmm. Um, excitement. Applause. I mean, wild. I mean, you guys are kind of natives of Comic-Con. These are your people. Mm-hmm. If there was booze and rotten fruit, we'd be shocked, <laughs> <laughs> horrified. Probably deserve it, but uh, these are we. These are our people. We have a lot of fun here. You know who's not our people, guys? I was in the elevator with one of the pretty yes. little liars, and she was quite grumpy. Tell us about um, the interactions of Comic Con. We don't know who it was. We think it was Grumpy Liar, and <laughs> she was not in the mood to be small talk to or uh, bothered at all. Like she's not coming to the robot she chicken was panel. Not, yeah, she's definitely not coming to the RC panel, and she had a little bit of kind of a. Uh, Kind of a comma grumpy. <laughs> she wasn't really... Did you talk to her? Did you approach her? We were. It was a very. It was a very cramped elevator, and I mentioned something. You know, I'm sure it was charming, and uh, it, it was met with a, a grimace. Mm, was the, the wow. only way I could describe it would be a grimace. What, what are the names of the other liars? Dopey, Bashful. Um, there's theater liar. There's theater liar. There's Twitter liar. There's Which, which one liar. is Nina Dobrev? Is she on the show now? Yeah. <laughs> sure. She's a vampire. I'm not sure. Anyway, didn't yeah. mean to yeah. segue. <laughs> no, listen, actually... It, this it's, is what we want to hear about. It's yeah. perfect prep because when they come in here later today, we're going to totally um, razz them about it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. we need your side yeah. of the story first. You yeah. Didn't, yeah, I said a story that I was just trying to make a Comic-Con friend and... <laughs> I was I was rebuffed. <laughs> Hard, it sounds like a yes. grimace. Now, yeah. do, do you make um, Comic Con first? Because you, you, you've been here. How many times have you done New York Comic Con? First of all, because this is sort of this the, is the our fifth. Is yeah. that right? As far as the panels and stuff. Mm-hmm. Ah, this is my first. Okay, so oh. this is my so first. So you're the historian, this is my first really. as well. Is that right? Oh. Yeah, really. Yeah, you you've are the been... the yeah. old man of the. Who was next to me last year? <laughs> you're like, what's Macaulay happening? Culkin. Who am I? <laughs> so, yeah. Rick is Macaulay Culkin makes his like yearly presence at yeah. at He's the robot for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and are, can we confirm that he'll be showing up today? Why is this, not? Is this sure. a surprise? He might have been. <laughs> the, by the way, that might be the person from Pretty Little Liars we saw in the elevator. <laughs> that might have been Macaulay Culkin for all I know. He is also blonde. Also pretty. I didn't say the person was blonde, Tom. No. Wow. I didn't, I didn't say the person in the elevator was blue. Spoiler oh. alert. Who oh, said the person in the elevator? <laughs> so, so we have at least, we have at least a one in four chance. Of the cast 700 liars. teens just were like, protect that little liar. <laughs> <laughs> when you guys started all this, I guess about 10 years ago, roughly, mm-hmm. right? What were your expectations? When Grumpy Liar was three. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine the 10 years ago you thought to yourselves, oh, this is going to be still like rocking a decade from now. No, we really thought we were headed for cancellation pretty quickly. Uh, we thought uh, no one was going to want to watch toys get animated more than a few times. Yeah. Just because it's such a, it's, to us, it felt like such an acquired taste. We were asking people to absorb. Oh, look, Seth Green has joined Seth us. Seth Green has ah. joined. Ah. Hi. Speaking of Pretty Little Liar. Seth, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. What did you say? We were just talking <laughs> about Pretty Little Liars. And... Oh, I ran into uh, Ashley uh, uh, Benson. Wait, was she blonde? <laughs> yeah. Was she, what was her demeanor? Oh, she was super nice. What the f***? I guess it was just you. Why? What did you do? I don't know. Did you approach her like a creepy adult? No, not at all. Is she the blonde liar? Yeah, she's yeah, the okay. One she was in the elevator. Wow. Like she was his favorite show. She's watched all yeah, of it. So it's I've also, seen. oddly enough, my daughter's favorite show. But <laughs> your wife, my daughter, that's fine. Yeah, they share Harry, Pot- Harry Potter, too. Yeah. Well, I ran into her in the hallway and uh, I got a picture with her and asked her what her uh, social was so, we got, so I could tag her. Okay, well, all right. Well, good luck wow. tagging her. But um, I, uh, I was in the elevator. Maybe it's just elevators. Maybe she's just. Grumpy around elevators. Maybe she just like, hey, what's up? My name's Brecken. No, I didn't I'm even. Famous. Do you want to like hang out tonight? I didn't tell her. I was like, hey, are you going to any Comic Con parties? Yeah. Does your mom like Clueless? <laughs> no. <laughs> Does your dad like Road Trip? No. Anyway, I'll change your diaper. Um, no, oh, she God, just she, she seemed really grumpy. Oh yeah. well, who knows? She was really nice. I'm loving watching this just unveil. I know, I'm like, exactly. sitting here riveting. Curious. Like, I didn't, I don't, I didn't, yeah. I didn't do yeah. anything. But let's just show you. There's two sides to every story. No, yeah. there's not. Seth's just magnanimous and sweet about it. I guarantee Listen, she was grumpy to him too. We will get to the bottom of it during our we'll interview in. with Pretty Little yeah. Liars. Yeah, please so do. Yeah. We will. We will. You we'll sure. figure it out. We'll figure it out. Yeah. What did I walk into? I thought this <laughs> yeah. was going to be cool. No, this is not cool because my feelings were hurt by a liar. I'm you sorry. know what? We can jump like back in. To. Seth, Tom yeah. was just telling us about the, you know, just the idea that this show has been on for 10 years now and, and you know, the original concept, just like how it's been for 10 years, right? We're going to take it back to. Uh, is there, was that. 
Well, no, we were we were letting Tom continue. We're gonna let Tom continue. All I was saying is, at the beginning, we didn't think that people were gonna want to watch these toys bop around on stage for too long. Uh, Like, would it sustain itself? Comedy told with action figures. My thought was no. Yeah, me too. I thought these were all of our personal musings and the things that no one else was thinking. I thought that these were the conversations for like basements and you know, Comic-Con. Of course. <laughs> or Comic-Con became the place that everybody brings their family. So yeah. And gets just... slighted by people on um, young adult TV shows. You're I mean, so that's a thing. Funny. You but like even, one of those shows but even like a, tell me about like attention. the nature of like okay. technology wise like going from stop motion over the course of like 10 years has much changed or do you guys still do it the same way you did from it's actually gotten back in the gumby days it was way harder than what we started doing but even in the decade that we've been doing it um, just what we can do with uh, cg to sweeten up the images has been so streamlined it's so much easier and sharper looking now the biggest innovation is in the playback and that doesn't seem like it would be a big deal but when stop motion was first developed the people would have to use measuring tape to check the distance of each of their movements to make sure that the ratio of movement was seamless because it was shot on film a single frame at a time. And so now there's digital advancements. I know it's painstaking, right? I was just thinking of the guy in his car listening to this. <laughs> no, I'm like, like do, I just, do I just turn into traffic <laughs> now? Do I change the channel? Do I just go off the bridge? I wonder if Selena Gomez says said. anything. <laughs> Let me turn on hits one. Check out Demi Lovato's new there track. There we go. Cool for the summer. Oh, I really like this Halsey girl. She's She's got a lot to say. You don't like Lana Del Rey and Lord's a little too much for you. Oh, Halsey's right up your alley. See, our listeners actually love stuff. This is what they want to hear about, which tells yeah. you more about our show maybe. So, But what, 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 how else has the show changed in this period of time? Because like, when you have a, a show that you kick off 10 years ago, I'm sure you have expectations. All right, we can kick this off for a couple of years. How do you keep it going 10 years, keep people interested, keep yourselves interested in doing it? Well, one of the cool things that happened, uh, we were just talking about this earlier, is that our show and YouTube and short form content all sort of uh, landed at the same time. It was uh, when we actually started this show um, in in the year 2000 on uh, the web, you couldn't even stream video uh, because most people had dial up. And then five years later, we had a show, and all of a sudden, people could watch video, but only for a couple minutes at a time, or it got really annoying. Um, and it's almost like technology and what we wanted to do happened at the same time. Um, Just dumb luck. Yeah. Really? How long does it actually take to make one episode? You can't really, it, it doesn't mathematically make, again, drive right into traffic. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense to do it uh, we'll one episode it at a time. So you have to do um, a block of episodes at a time just to be able to make it cost efficient. Okay. Because otherwise, the uh, micromanagement of the actual yeah. interdepartmental exactly. financing, if you want to do exactly how long it takes from script to screen, maybe 11 months. It Something averages is about uh, writing. Uh, we do we write a script a week to animate. It's about six or seven days of animation per episode. Mm-hmm. Uh, but in like Seth cases, was saying, five weeks. <laughs> yeah. in some cases, all of our stages get absorbed by stuff. Yep. And then we can't make our show on time. It we, happens. We've done all the Star Wars specials and the DC specials in about fourteen to fifteen weeks. That's that's about right. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, you, that. but that's with a massive upfront pre-production that results in 20 episodes of a season. Sure. And okay. no measuring tape. <laughs> and no measuring tape. Or at all. That would, that would kill yeah. us. How long would you guys want to keep doing this before it felt like you guys were sort of recreating or re... Or stepping over your own sort of storylines, or um, there's no, it's it's pop, you know what I mean? It's whatever sticks to pop, and so to that end, we keep hiring new writers to give us their opinion of the things that influence them as kids, which is kind of what we started doing in the first place. And so, as long as it's always through our lens or through a a place of affection, you know, it's never just making fun of something or deconstructing something. It's really just pointing out the inherent silliness of something we actually love a lot. And so Matt said in like the fourth or fifth season that we could just do it for as long as we wanted to do it. And Adult Swim has been pretty cool about saying, well, we'll see season by season. Um, that was a joke. Yep. I was no, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's, it's true. Uh, but, the, but the idea is we could continue to employ you know, new people all the time. We could do this forever. 
Yeah, we could keep making Forever. it as, as, long as, as long as people like looking introspectively at pop culture in a comedic way. In the yeah. beginning, we really thought, oh, we got to like develop more recurring characters or people aren't like, what is this show? Yeah. And it turns out all it is is a sketch comedy show like Saturday Night Live yeah. where you just fill in whatever occurs to you as funny for that week. Although um, we calculated we had more guest stars than Saturday Night Live, even though they've been on 40 years. Really? Yeah, yeah, because we we tend to have five to six uh, people per episode, yeah. and they only have a single guest host, and a lot of them have repeated. We've lapped them. Oh, yeah. wow. It's crazy. How Congrats. do you approach your friends to do this? Um, is hey, it the kind of thing you where... You want to spend 15 minutes of your time doing something really is it, funny? Right. Is it literally like 15 minutes <laughs> yeah. for, for yeah, those folks? We, we, do, we have people all over the world. We do people by remotes. We have people come into the booth if they can. But it it's so fast that most actors are disoriented as we shove them out the door because there's just... It doesn't usually have... They're just getting warmed up. Yeah, I had Jared Harrison, and we hung out for like half an hour before we got in the booth just talking about what he was going to do. And I was like, I have never spent this much time with any performer, <laughs> and I feel like this is going to be the most thoroughly thought out episode of the show ever. P.S. It's a brilliant sketch called Mastermind, and I think, I think we might get nominated. Wow. Wow. Uh, an Academy Award. An yeah, TV yeah. show nominated for an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> this will be Can't it. Can't wait. Well, yeah. Pretty yeah. Pretty you know, there's, pretty there's a special airing, the Robot Chicken DC Comics Special 3 Magical Friendship, which is coming up on October 18th. What can you tell us about this? Well, it's number three. Um, we yep. and it's the last one. Yeah, so um, it's the return of the Jedi of our trilogy. Yes, uh, we um, because Batman v Superman is uh, what everyone's talking about in the DC universe. We wanted to do our own uh, analysis of Batman and Superman's relationship, uh, and it's really kind of a love story about their friendship. And, and right. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. there's this thing that nobody really talks about, which is that Superman is completely invincible and that Batman's just a guy, in just a, a crazy rich no guy. Parents. Yeah, he's like an orphan with no parent. <laughs> with, like, he's like trust. He's like a trust fund boy with a costume. Yeah. Um. So, so, you know, it's like Mark Zuckerberg's kid. If he, if it's, <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like if Paris Hilton became a superhero. That's kind of what Batman is, except. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jesus. He's like deeply beloved. Yeah. And, it, and, and, uh, and he's tortured. He's like a little emo kid with a trust fund. He's very emotional. Yeah. 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 And right. Superman can do anything. And he's like, my dad died. I don't care. You know, he's fine with it. I can, I can, hey, you know. I got two dead dads. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. I can make the war. I can turn time backwards by flying really fast. And Batman's like, I got this cool car. Shut up. You know. So it's but both of these characters are equally iconic in culture, and so we wanted to sort of demonstrate how both of them are viable, how they would interact, and, and make it look, make it funny. And it tends to be. When yeah. you guys ap approach them, are, are, are there any, do they have concerns about sort of heading into this space? Because they know they're going to be spoofed, they know they're going to be sort of, or, or are they like, you know what, we love what you guys do and it's fine? Or are they, are they watchful of how their brand is treated with you guys? Well, Jeff Johns, uh, and I've been saying this a lot because it's just such a good observation. Jeff Johns said the last time we did this that these characters, you, you can't break them. You know, they are deeply iconic and they are such powerful personas that they can be, represented not only in a Chris Nolan movie where it's dark and people are dying for real or in some kind of like play school kid version. Those are all versions of Batman that are sound. Those are all access points for someone. Well, you know they don't die for real in Chris Nolan's movie. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's still a movie. I know, movie. it's just actors, right, just, We don't have to talk about that again. It's still a movie. I'm like, I cried at Lion King. No, what are you going to do? It. I just thought the, one day. Again, by the way, he's not really dead. I know, and he's a cartoon. It's James Earl Jones. I went over this, yeah. I know. Okay. Anyway. Continue. I don't think I could. <laughs> yeah. I, okay. Good. Perfect. We are going to have this on October 18th. The Robot Chicken DC Comics Special 3 Magical Friendship. It premieres at midnight on Adult Swim. It's a Sunday night. Yeah. Guys, congratulations on number three. Thanks. Thanks. Great. Thanks. Um, it's coming. I like it.